This video is part of my video course that teaches how to test Java with GUnit and Makita. For other video lessons in this playlist, check description of this video. In this video lesson, you will learn about annotation that will help you disable your unit test. Usually, it's not a good idea to disable unit test, and if unit test is failing for some reason and you're not sure why it is failing, do not disable it. Try to figure out why it is failing and fix it. But if you do need to disable your unit test, there are a couple of ways to do it. The first way is to simply comment out the test annotation. So here I have a failing unit test. I intentionally fail it with fail assertion. So to disable this unit test, I can simply comment out the test annotation. If there is no test annotation, then it is not a test method and it will not be executed when you run all your unit tests and it will not be included in a test report. So let's try. I will save my test class and then I will run all test methods in this class. Here I have my test report and I do not have a failing test anymore. So this test here that is called test integer division, when dividend is divided by zero, it should throw arithmetic exception. So this test method did not even execute and it is not in the test report because it is not even a test method. Now, another way to disable unit test is to use a special annotation that is called disabled. I will enable test annotation and I will add one more annotation maybe at the top, disabled. I can also add a message like for example to do and something like still need to work on it, like this. And this will be a better way to disable unit test because the test will not run but it will be included in a test report. So let's try. I will save changes to this test class and now I will go up and will run all test methods in this class. Now if you look at my test report then I clearly see that there is a test method that is disabled. The test is visible and it is better because I can see it and it reminds me that I do have a test method and I still need to work on it. Alright, so now you know how to properly disable a test method if needed. But again, if you are working on a team with other developers, you need to commit your code and the build is failing because of a failing unit test method, do not disable the unit test method just to make your code go through the build stage. That unit test might be failing for a reason and it is better to figure out that reason rather than disabling the unit test. Alright, so let's continue to the next lesson.